Yat eh. Hello, my name is Shandine Herrera. I'm a member of the Navajo Nation and I reside in Monument Valley, Utah. I graduated from Duke with my bachelor's in public policy in May of 2019 and I returned home to the Navajo Nation as a Lead for America hometown fellow. Um, my current role is as a policy analyst and project consultant with the Iljato chapter. Um, you know, Every day I was dealing with policy issues in my own community and um, thinking, you know, how we can amend these policies that a lot of the times we didn't even create. You know, these are policies that were forced upon our people here on the Navajo Nation and we are still learning how to navigate our own government and our own structures and how to make, um, you know, policy more understandable and accessible to everybody. Um, and so I find that... I was really able to um, transfer my education from Duke in policy um, to the work I do here on the grounds as an advocate um, and as someone who is the youngest person working right now in my tribal government here in Monument Valley, but, you know, really just trying to make sure that policy is not this, you know, scary term that a lot of people think um, when they hear policy and they hear the rhetoric we use, but, um, you know, my job is really to make sure that everyone understands uh, what the policies here are and, you know, how to navigate it, um, but also, too, to really analyze uh you know, the structures in place and how do we improve them for our people to make it easier, um, you know, so that our people can access, um, you know, a home site lease to build a house that, you know, should be, it, it shouldn't take 10 years, which is kind of the norm, unfortunately. You know, how do we make it so that our people have access to running water and electricity? Um, you know, how do we protect our youth? How do we encourage higher education, but also maintain our traditional knowledge? You know, these are all involved in the policymaking process. And I think it's so important for people my age, um, you know, I'm 23 years old and I immediately turned home, returned home to the Navajo Nation um, to really learn how our communities function and how I can be an asset and, you know, changing that for the better. Um, and I really think that young people need to be involved in this policy making process, um, you know, because these policies directly infect, uh, directly impact us and our family. And so it's important that we have a seat at the table. You know, with um, the impacts of COVID-19, unfortunately, the Navajo Nation, uh, you know, is one of the hot spots in this country. Um, we have now over 1,500 positive cases and nearly 60 deaths. And, you know, that rate per capita, we're ranked number three now in this country, which is absolutely insane. And um, I think for me it's kind of surreal to be living at, you know, in this moment and navigating through just this change in reality. Um, but really for me, my reality has changed in that all of the chapter, which is the form of local government here on the on Navajo Nation, um, all of the chapters have been completely shut down, you know, so that means, you know, I'm not currently working right now. Um, and it, it, it's just insane to think that, you know, we have a land base of 27,000 square miles. Um, we have 110 chapters. Our reservation is the size of West Virginia, yet all of our local governments have been completely shut down. Um, and I have seen in my own community and adjacent communities how this has directly impacted, you know, our community members. Um, who do they go to? Who do they, you know, call for help? Um, and a lot of chapters, you know, was the, was the hub of information, um, support, and also, you know, the place you go for basic necessities such as water, um, you know, just literally any type of support you can think of, the chapters you go to. But, um, you know, it's a little shocking that in a time of crisis that these institutions were completely shut down. Um, and, you know, to me, that shows the lack of preventative policy, the lack of preparedness, you know, should something of this magnitude happen to us, what are we going to do? Um, and the first reaction should not be shutting down. You know, as a local government, we are supposed to be in the business of helping our people through anything. Um, and so, you know, it, it was disheartening for that to happen, but really just showed me the dire need for policy improvement here on Navajo. Um, and, you know, now that I'm not necessarily working with my chapter, I have found other ways to be involved and to help my people. Um, I am a lead volunteer with the Navajo Hopi COVID relief effort. I serve as the Utah lead as well as the call center coordinator. Um, you know, we have distributed over um, care, package to, care packages to over 
2,000 families um, in over 45 communities on the Navajo Nation, as well as four of the 12 Hopi villages. Um, and we have raised now over $1 million. And, you know, this relief effort is so needed because we don't have that support from our local governments, you know. At the end of the day, our people need to eat. They need water. Their animals need to be fed. They need cleaning supplies, um, you know. And that's what we're doing through this relief effort is um, – providing that immediate um, aid that our people need and um, you know, I just think that my involvement with this relief effort also has just really highlighted, you know, the need for the relief effort, right? And so had all the local governments stayed open and were able to provide that immediate relief in their respective communities, there nece there wouldn't necessarily be this huge need for our relief effort, right? If that was just funneled through our local governments and if that if there were policies, preventative policies in place, you know, our people wouldn't be struggling as much as they are. Um, you know, we have over 4,000 requests for support right now from folks across Navajo and Hopi, um, you know, and unfortunately they can't just turn to the local government for the support and that is why they're reaching out to us, but you know, that um, makes us so important and vital in this, in this pandemic for our people and I'm very fortunate that I am, you know, able to show up in this way for my people, though it may not be immediately through, you know, my role as a policy analyst and project consultant uh, with my local government, but, you know, as a volunteer and just, you know, seeing firsthand, you know, the implications of, you know, complete shutdowns um, and leaving our people in the dark and just, you know, work and seeing how we just really need to work together um, to get through this pandemic. Um, and then hopefully, you know, we learn from this and we are able to, you know, analyze really the purpose of our local governments. Um, you know, if they're just going to shut down in a time of crisis, then, you know, we really need to go back to the drawing board and, you know, see why that is and, you know, rethink what is our government here for? Um, what are we going to provide to our people if not immediate support? So, you know, that's just a little bit of what I have seen here on the grounds in um, Monument Valley and across the Navajo Nation. And, you know, this is why policy matters. Um, this is why policy is important. Um, and I think now, now more than ever, we're, we're seeing that in, in indigenous communities across this country.